with me that when we give Jesus the praise in the house of the day, come on, let's clap our hands and give him praise. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be magnified. Just do me a favor and just lock arms with someone sitting next to you. Just lock arms with them very quickly. Let's bow our heads with a prayer. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this time, space, and opportunity again that you've allowed us to come into this house to give you praise, honor, and glory. Father, we exalt you and we exalt you, we magnify and micrograph your name, for we realize that from the rising of the sun to the going down the very same, you alone are worthy to be praised. And will forever to give your name glory and honor. Now, Father, as your son stands behind the sacred desk to declare your word to your people once again, I pray that you will sit me down and send up a minister to these nine people. Anoint us afresh. Sit for your anointing that makes preaching effective tonight. In the name of Jesus, bless this word. They will fall on ears to hear and hearts to receive your word. And will forever to give your name the praise, the honor, and the glory. And now, Father, to hold the neighbor's hand that I am locked in arms with today. I pray now, God, that you are praying to their life more strength. I pray into their life more blessings. I pray into their life, God, the things that they may be praying for secretly. I pray that you will bless them with publicly in the name of Jesus. And we'll be able to give you praise. Now, Father, we thank you for the honoree tonight. We thank you for your woman servant. Overseer Rosalind Young, who we have come to celebrate you for tonight. Now bless us again, and we shall be blessed, and keep us, and we shall be kept. And we ask all these blessings in Jesus' name. We pray. Can you just give God the loudest praise you can give him right now? Sometimes it is very interesting how you can ask God to bless you, but you never know what it's going to take for the blessing to come. Sometimes God will shift things around and you're not even realizing that he's trying to set you up for something good and have no idea. Amen. We thank God for last night. The banquet was awesome. Yes, it was. Amen. We had an awesome time at the banquet last night. The food was excellent. Amen. And we had good church. Amen. In a small period of time. Amen. But we're grateful to be here on tonight. I want you to grab your kingdom constitutions and let's go very quickly to the word of the Lord. The book of Esther, chapter number 8. Last night I preached from Esther, chapter number 7. And so I want to conclude our series uh, during these two days in Esther, chapter number 8. And I will ask that once you have it, that you stand to your feet for the reading of God's word. Amen. That is uh, Esther, chapter number 8. Amen. Commencing at verse number one. To all of the musicians that have played tonight, God bless you. Amen. Overseer, you have outdone yourself again with your hospitality. I appreciate you so much for all that you have done for us. Amen. As we have come to celebrate you. Uh, Esther chapter number eight. Commencing at verse number one. Once you have it, just respond by saying, I have the word. I have the word. If you don't have it, you say, wait a minute, preacher. Esther chapter number one. Commencing at verse number one. Esther chapter number eight, commencing at verse number one. When you have response, say, Who there it is. Who there it is. They received the word of the Lord in King James Version on that day. Did the king Ahasuerus give the house of Haman to Jews, enemy unto Esther the queen? And Mordecai came before the king, and Esther told what was he was unto her. And the king took off his ring, which he had taken from Haman, and gave it unto Mordecai. And Esther set Mordecai over the house of Haman. And Esther spake yet again before the king and fell down at his feet and besought him with tears to put away the mischief of Haman the Agagite and his device that he had devised against the Jews. Then the king held out the golden scepter toward Esther and so Esther arose and stood up before the king and he said, if it please the king and if I have found favor in his sight and the thing seem right before the king, I be pleasing in his eyes, let it be written to reverse, someone say reverse. reverse. The letters devised by Haman the son of Hamabathia, the Agagite, which he wrote to destroy the Jews, which are in the king's providence. For how can I endure to see this evil that shall come unto my people? Or how can I endure to see the destruction of my kindred? And, and King Ahasuerus said unto Esther the queen and to Mordecai the Jew, Behold, I have given Esther the house of Haman, and him they have hung upon the gallows, because he laid his hands upon the Jews. 
Verse number eight is for you, mom. It says, write ye also for the Jews as it liketh you in the king's name and seal it with the king's ring for the writing which is written in the king's name and sealed with the king's ring can no man reverse. And the word of the Lord is already blessed. Can the church shout amen? Do me a favor, just do me a favor, smile at your neighbor and show them your teeth, whether they are yours or not. Just look at them and just let me announce my text and say, neighbor, that must have been a quiet neighbor, but find me somebody who's excited. Look at them and say, oh, neighbor, he reversed the verdict. Look at somebody else and say, neighbor, he reversed the verdict. Look at somebody else with an attitude and say, hey, neighbor. years of pastoral ministry for my mother, Overseer Rosalind Young. On last night, we dealt with a woman by the name of Queen Esther, whose name is actually Hadassah, who has been chosen by God to actually change the plan that the enemy has devised for the Jews. As a pastor, you must understand, it is not just your job to dress up, sit in the front right. of the pulpit, and just come to church and preach and drop nice cars and live in a nice house. It is your job as the pastor to come and to pour into the very people that God has assigned to your name. I think the problem with many people in church is that they have forgotten the real purpose of pastoring. Many people have made pastoring out to be popularity. It is amazing to me how many broke pastors we really have. You can always tell when they don't have anything, when they come to consecrations and ordinations, and they ask for $500, and you have all these vestments but can't give up to give a hundred. It's amazing how we make it seem as if that you are higher than the people that you serve when even you yourself are struggling to maintain your building and your own house. It's amazing how pastors have lost the real understanding that as a leader and a shepherd, the Bible says, I have given you some to be that pastor. Everybody is not going to be a pastor. Everybody is not going to be in the forefront. Everybody is not going to be placed into the forefront because everybody cannot handle what it takes to be in the front. Many times when you look at the people that God called to lead or either to bring people out, they had to endure some hardship. They had to endure some pain. They had to endure some situations. But it is amazing to me that there's never a time that any time people are in trouble that God would never raise up somebody who can bring them out of what they are in. Uh, it is amazing because I saw uh, it amazing to me because during this pandemic, I finally began to notice how many people were really called to preach. <laughs> because during that time, I noticed, I wondered, could you still preach uh, behind the camera when nobody could say amen? I wanted to see, could you still be able to prophesy when you couldn't see the people that were behind the screen? I wanted to be able to, did you have that same zeal and energy that you gave when you were in the pulpit and people were screaming, preach pastor, preach preacher, without nobody's support. But the interesting thing is, I've learned that when you really are anointed, it does not matter if you're in church or behind the camera, when you're anointed, you still got to get the job done. Just do me a favor, look at somebody say, I am anointed. There is a difference, ladies and gentlemen, between being anointed and just gifted. There are many people that when they get up and sing, they're just gifted. They may be able to do riffs and people are moving and shaking their hand, but when you're really anointed to sing, to dance, to preach, to raise money, or whatever it is that God has called you to do, you can always tell the difference between gifting and anointing. <laughs> because you can be anointed and sit in the back of the church. You can be anointed and don't need to be escorted to the front. If you're an intercessor, I can intercede from the back of the church. Do me a favor, look at somebody and say, I am anointed. I'm anointed. My anointing is not subject to how many people are in a room. And one thing you're going to learn about this little skinny boy, Jamal, is that my pastor taught me you don't preach for numbers. You don't preach because there's only seven people there and you give them half of a message. You don't got to give them everything you got because you don't know what the hell they've been doing just to get to hear your sermon tonight. But I came tonight to encourage somebody to tell you that God said I'm here to reverse some stuff in your favor. I just need every person that needs 
something reversed to holler. I need it reversed. I need it reversed. I need it reversed. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the plot is <laughs> to kill all the Jews that are inside the providence. <laughs> it is because one Jew by the name of Mordecai did not bow to a man by the name of Haman. <laughs> As last night we preached about the banquet. <laughs> well, the Bible talks about that Esther the queen had a banquet. <laughs> and she only had the banquet because she wanted to expose the plot of the enemy. <laughs> it's amazing. She had all these beautiful banquet stuff <laughs> just so that she could invite two people. <laughs> told y'all last night who they were, the two people she only invited to the banquet ha, was the one that was for her ha, and the one that was against her. Ha, uh, I'm going to say it again. I said the only two people she invited was the one that was for her and the one that was against her. Ha, you know you really are anointed ha, when you can sit at a table with people you know don't like you. Ha, when you can sit at a table with people ha, that have been running your name in the crowd. Ha, you know you really anointed when you can still say, do you need anything? <laughs> when you know for a fact they've been dogging you out. <laughs> because God said, let those that do things against you. <laughs> and Esther invited them to the banquet. <laughs> and the king found out that Haman wanted to get rid of the Jews. <laughs> and so Esther's job <laughs> was to save her people from being destroyed. <laughs> and overseer, that is the assignment of the leader. <laughs> Their job is to protect the people of God. And it's interesting because you really can't be a shepherd if you ain't never been no sheep. It's quiet. Uh, you can never be a shepherd if you have never ever sat under somebody. Because everybody wants to lead, but don't nobody want to submit to nobody. And one of the people I tell you all the time, the only reason why God has allowed me to go as far as I have is because I was submitted to my leader. One thing I learned that I did not care, this was not my first gift. My first gift was to play drums. Every Sunday I sat on the drums and played drums. When my pastor had to go preach, I served as an adjutant. And those of us that ever serve as adjutants understand, when your father or your spiritual mother went to preach, you were not on the same level as them. So you may could have walked in the office, but they would tell you, can you step out for a minute? Because there was some stuff leaders could only discuss. And then we couldn't handle everything. And now as a young man, I know I look 12, but I'm 32. At 32 years old, I learned a lot in ministry. One thing I learned in ministry is that everybody does not have your back. There are some people who literally will only show up in your space just to train your battery. You don't believe me? Watch this. The reason why many of you have been losing so much is because your people around you are like apps. If you have an iPhone, you must understand that you download too many apps. When the time comes for an upgrade and there's no space in your storage, you cannot download the new update. And I came to tell somebody tonight, the reason why you can't get nowhere yet because you downloaded so many apps. Do me a favor, look at somebody and find your voice like I got mine. And find your right hand and put it over your right ear. And look at them and say, oh, neighbor. No, you ain't got your voice like I got mine. Look at them and say, oh, neighbor. 
for it. But the Bible says now that in the text that now Haman has been exposed. And while Haman has been exposed, the Bible says that now that was chapter 7. Look at somebody say it's time to switch chapters. Chapters. Oh, no, no, tell somebody it's time to switch chapters. But there was a song my sister I loved by Bobby Valentino. I know they're going to lose me right now. Because I don't just listen to gospel. There's some things in Mother Storage too. Bobby Valentino had a song that said, You don't have to turn the page. I read the story. It ends with you and me. You don't have to walk away. But then I had to understand. Something. I'm sorry. Sometimes the only way to turn the page, you gotta finish the last chapter. And the problem with some people, they're trying to jump the chapters before they get the real meat of the story. And what happened is chapter seven closes with this one thing. I didn't deal with it last night, but I wanted to make sure I added it in with the message. The king was upset when he saw what Haman did. And they dragged Haman out and hung him on the same gallows that he wanted to hang Mordecai on. But then the last verse of chapter 7 says, and the king's anger was pacified. Let me see if I can find you in the room. It says, and the king's anger was pacified. Which means this. It's one thing when God is upset. And he really is angry. And only one thing could calm him down. Was death. And I came to tell some of y'all. God said I would stop being so mad at you. If you would just kill what I told you to kill. You're still in that relationship. And I told you to get out of here. You're still stuck in that stuff. And I said drop it and leave it alone. Your life. I know I don't get too many amen, but I'm really talking. I 
the same thing about these women. You got some women who don't want to work no job. My last girlfriend told me, I just want to stay home, babe. I said, this relationship is over. Because you got to work. I got to work. And we're going to work this thing together. Oh, y'all don't want to have no church. But they don't want to say nothing they dad. They don't want to say nothing, Gavin. Because some people stuck in that stuff right now. women struggle taking care of them, the kids, and the man. But King Ahasuerus loved his boo so much. He said to Queen Esther, baby, what do you want? You can have even up to half of my kingdom. I told them last night, sis, I said, I know somebody told me, oh, the way to a man's heart is through his stomach. I'm skinny. Ain't no coming to no food. There's a different direction. You gotta go, honey. Watch this. Who knows how to cover me? Oh, oh. y'all just marry anybody. Get me with somebody that know how to pray. Get me with somebody that ain't gonna be jealous when another woman walk up and say, "Praise the Lord." I need a woman that is not intimidated by no other woman because I'm with you. I'm with you. Church quiet. this. He said the wealth of the wicked 
is laid up for the just. And that wicked man signed 600 extra dollars to y'all's unemployment. That was money that was laid up just for you. And let's be real. Can I say this? And I'll see if I'm talking to the church. The only reason why the world got some extra stuff because the church had extra prayer. There's some stuff the world got because we prayed for it. Y'all living off of what we prayed for. Y'all surviving off of what we prayed for. And God ain't going to bless the world and not bless us. I need all the blessed people. Jump up out of your seat and give God a 60 second praise right now. I need you to open up your mouth. Is one 